something's off with the Durhams. Marty and Glenna live what seems like a normal life in Michigan, but under the surface, there's a whole lot of drama brewing. When their home turns into a crime scene, the star witness is their seriously sassy parrot, Bud. But wait. <laughs> It gets weirder, because there's also a psychic who claims to have all the answers, a death threat delivered via crossbow, and a wife who went from victim to possible victim to prime suspect. This case has more plot twists than a daytime soap. Let's recap. So the neighbors haven't heard a peep from the Durhams for two whole days. And let me tell you, that is weird because those two are always chatting away, texting every day like clockwork. And then on May 13th, 2015, the neighbor lady decides enough's enough. She marches across the street, swings open their front door and finds them on the bedroom floor. 46 year old Marty's in his underwear. His wife Glenn is dressed, but she's half covered with a blanket. So as far as she can tell, they're both dead and gone, except no one actually checks to make sure. An hour later, after a fire chief and two EMTs have come and gone, a state trooper, who's just there for the dog, by the way, notices something surprising. Is Glenna breathing? So the second he checks Glenna's pulse, her eyes shoot open. What happened in this West Michigan home? The next day, Marty's three kids are in the empty house. They're trying to make sense of it all. And then in a stroke of luck, or is it fate, they stumble on a big manila envelope in the living room. It's marked with the words, personal and Jean Wieringa. And inside, three letters addressed to Glenna's two kids and her ex-husband. In those single page letters, Glenna asks her kids for forgiveness. I'm sorry, but I love you and so sorry I've been a disappointment to you these last 12 years or so. Please forgive me, you're one of the best things I ever did, love mom. And to her ex, she writes, I'm so sorry, I messed up, please be there for our two beautiful children and our grandkids as you have been, love Glenna. All of a sudden, police aren't looking for a mysterious bad guy anymore because now it looks like Glenn has got some explaining to do. But luckily, it looks like she's going to pull through. So she took one bullet behind the ear. Marty is a sadder story. He's shot five times and he didn't make it. A week rolls by and suddenly the cops have new evidence, courtesy of Fran Fallon, self-proclaimed psychic extraordinaire. So she says she's got a direct psychic connection to the case. Fran also happens to be married to one of Marty's cousins. We're gonna, we're gonna get there. But for now, she tells the cops, I see a couch or a love seat. There's something under it you need to find. But that's not all. She drops another bomb. Marty and Glenna's hands are important to the case. And guess what? Under the Durham's love seat, they find the smoking gun, L literally. And hold on to your seats. Marty died clutching a fistful of hair in his hand. But wait, hold up. Is Fran really channeling spirits? Or is like, she pulling a fast one? Because the detectives, they ain't buying it. And they start grilling her like a burger on a hot grill. But she's got a rock solid alibi. So who would want to kill mild mannered Marty? All right. Buckle up, cause you need some backstory. The Durhams tied the knot back in 2004. Marty came into it with some health troubles, thanks to this gnarly car wreck that left him with busted bones and some brain damage. So fast forward to 2010 and things take a turn for the worse. Glenna steps up to take care of him, which also earns her around $3,000 a month in benefits, cause you know how the government will pay somebody to take care of you. So while Marty is meanwhile collecting about $1,000 in disability. Now here's where it gets dicey. Literally. Marty's all about having money. He's the type to flick every light switch, keep the heat off in the winter, you know, make everybody just wear sweaters. But Glenna, she's a gambler. She's dropping anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks on lottery tickets three to four times a week. And that's not all. She's a regular at the casinos too. Now Marty knows all this. Sometimes he comes with her, but he has no idea how much she is spending because in the last year or so, she starts dipping into the money meant for the car the taxes, even the mortgage payments. Before she knows it, the IRS is knocking. A repo agency tries to take the car. Medical bills start stacking up and the bank slaps a foreclosure notice on the house. But are you ready for this? Marty doesn't know that he's like this close to losing the house because Glenna is the one who pays the bills. So a few weeks before the shooting, he gets a call from his mom. She's like, hey, 
There's a notice in the paper saying your house is going to be foreclosed. So what's that about? So Marty's like, well, that's got to be a mistake. Let me ask Glenna. And she says, oh, yeah, it is a mistake. I'm going to call the bank. I'm going to get this all cleared up. Don't worry about it. But... Of course, it's all gone way too far by this point. Though after the shooting, it takes months for cops to sit down with Glenna. And her memory's a bit fuzzy, to say the least. She's like, I love my husband. I would never hurt him. If anything, I wish I died with him. And then they're like, well, did you in fact try to die with him? And she's like, no, I didn't pull the trigger. I didn't feel that way until after. So when they ask her about these letters to her kids she and her ex, she's like, I don't remember writing goodbye letters. They're probably just birthday messages from before. That sounds like something I write for their birthdays. And to her ex, she's she's stumped. Any communication with him, she says, that would be a simple kiss my you know what. So clearly I couldn't have written that. And the more questions they ask, the faster her story starts to unravel like a cheap sweater. So how does she explain this? From the wee hours of 3.30 a.m. to about 4.45 a.m. on May 13th, that phone of hers is working overtime with five searches about the murder weapon found under the love seat. And to top it off, right after all that searching, there is a text to her mom, a simple, love you, sorry. Glenna says, I don't know. It wasn't me. I would never look up those things. If I'm on my phone, I'm playing games. I... I have no idea. Well, it's all painting a pretty damning picture, but it's the family parrot, Bud, who steals the show with his uncanny ability to mimic a heated argument. This is wild. Did you know that African greys can imitate voices? Like, very well. And they're as smart as a five-year-old, which, I mean, doesn't sound like genius level to you and me, but we're talking about a bird. So after Marty dies, Bud goes back to his first owner, Marty's ex-wife, and that's when she notices something strange. Bud is really worked up. He keeps repeating the same argument. He's using different voices and everything. Gotta check this out. Get your ass in the moment now! So in case you didn't quite get that, he's saying, shut up, get your beep over here. And in Marty's voice, he says, don't effing shoot. His owner's last words. How amazing are animals? But the prosecution doesn't want to put Bud on the stand. I know it sounds crazy, but it's actually not so crazy because it's been done before. But in this case, they decide no. So it's looking more and more like Glenna's not a victim, but actually the prime suspect. Murder-suicide gone wrong. And with every month that passes, is she going to get away with this? It sure makes for some serious family drama. Marty's clan against Glenna's. But remember Fran, our psychic? Remember how she's married to Marty's cousin, right? But she thinks Glenna's innocent. So she's over here breaking ranks, testifying for Glenna in probate hearings. And it just keeps heating up. After one hearing, she's told, you should keep a loaded gun at your side because who knows what can happen. Look what happened to Marty. And it gets even more intense. So after another hearing, someone hand delivers this chilling message. An arrow, of all things, from a crossbow propped against her garage door with a bone-chilling note. You're next. Yikes. Well, a year goes by. There's still no arrests, and Marty's ex decides to shake things up a little. So she sends Bud's video, but the video you saw, to reporters, hoping to get a little light on the case. Well, the media eats it up, and before you know it, Glenn is in handcuffs. She goes on trial in the summer of 2017. Now, Bud might not be sworn in, but he's still the unofficial star witness, because it's really hard to argue with that video. Plus, the goodbye letters, the search history, the looming foreclosure. In the end, the jury took eight hours to find Glenna guilty of murder and sentence her to life behind bars. And she would have gotten away with it too if it hadn't been for that meddling bird. I hope Bud gets a lot of Scooby Snacks. Huh? Crazy. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you like getting all the crime in half the time, it would mean so much to us if you let us know, give this a thumbs up and absolutely be sure to subscribe so you never miss a recap. We love spending time with you. We want to do it again very, very soon. See you next time.